This is the Poco X4 GT disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Next, we need to use a hair dryer or a heat gun to apply heat to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the plastic back plate. There are 14 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Next, the camera bezel needs to be removed. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. Here's a look at the other side. There are three more Phillips screws which need to be removed. At this point, we need to place a plastic pry tool in between the back housing and the frame of the screen and run along the edges to pop off the catches. Now we can lift the back housing to the side and then start off by disconnecting the battery cables first. And then we can disconnect the cable for the fingerprint sensor. The back housing is also made of plastic. The LED flash is located here, and the NFC antenna is located on top. On the other side, we can see a large area of graphite film to help transfer heat, and numerous antenna flex cables around the border. There is also a thermal pad behind the board for the LED flash. There are two coaxial cables on the bottom right side of the board that need to be disconnected by popping them off. Here's a better look at the 16 megapixel front facing camera. Now the main board can be lifted up and removed. On the main board, there's a 64 megapixel primary camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide lens, and a 2 megapixel macro lens. The flex cables for the cameras can be disconnected by just popping them off. None of the cameras have OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone on top located underneath the shield. The headphone jack is located on the top corner and there's a rubber gasket around it. And there's copper tape over the front shield. Once the copper tape is peeled back, we can see thermal paste on top of these chips and resistors. On the back, there's an infrared or IR blaster on top. And there's more copper tape over the back shields as well as some thermal paste. Once the copper tape on the back shield is removed, we can see thermal paste on these chips and the RAM and processor. The bottom speaker assembly can be lifted up and removed. There's some more graphite film over the speaker assembly to help transfer heat. And there's a mesh filter over the opening of the speaker. In order to remove the battery, there's a pull tab provided to help pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the 5080 milliamp hour battery. Once the battery adhesive pouch is peeled back, we have access to the screen cable which is routed through an opening in the midframe, and the flex cable which connects the main board to the subboard. So if you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to pry the back plate off, remove the screws, the camera bezel, and the back housing, disconnect the battery cable and pry the battery off, and then you'd disconnect the screen cable, heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry your old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the midframe, and reassemble the phone. Once those flex cables are peeled back, we have a better look at the copper vapor chamber underneath the battery, and it runs along underneath the motherboard. To remove the subboard, we need to disconnect this flex cable and the two other ends of the coaxial cable. Now the subboard can be lifted up and removed. There's a rubber gasket around the charger port, and the primary microphone is located underneath the shield. The SIM reader is located on the back. The X-axis linear motor is located here and it's held on some adhesive, so if you need to replace that, you'd have to heat it up and pry it off. There's a liquid damage indicator sticker, which is this white sticker over here. 
and the flex cable for the volume keys and power button is located on this side and that's also held down with some adhesive. The proximity sensor is located on top as well as the earpiece speaker, both of which are also held down with adhesive. And there's another liquid damage indicator sticker which is that white sticker there. For the repairability score on this phone I give it a 6.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply a new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.